Good day, my valued students. In the free video tutorial that you're about to watch, I will share with you my time-tested production techniques for setting up a WordPress site from scratch, adding the ultimatum theme, which is my favorite go-to theme for working with WordPress, how to secure your site, and some of my favorite plugins and production tools. Now, this is a free sample video of tips and techniques of how to do this based on my full course on thinklearnearn.guru. When you sign up for my full course, you'll not only get lifetime access to all my training videos on WordPress, including the Ultimatum theme, including my new Parallax, how to build Parallax with WordPress websites using the Ultimatum theme coming up at uh, the beginning of the month, uh, the middle of the month. In addition to when you sign up for my courses, you will get the free unlimited pro development license, normally $125. You'll get that free when you sign up for any of my ultimatum theme courses. Also, in this video series that you're about to watch for free, I will share with you how to use my absolute favorite point and click CSS plugin called MicroThemer. Now, when you sign up for my course, you'll get the developer version in addition to my course. You'll get the developer version, but on as many websites as you want, absolutely free. So you can get to go in to get this plugin for free when you sign up for my course. You get the ultimatum theme free when you sign up for my course. And of course you get me when you sign up for my course. So crack your knuckles, roll up your sleeve, and let's get started to learn how to use the ultimatum theme the right way. And more importantly, protect your website against hackers. We're going to go into that next. So before we get into anything else, I just want to share with you my all-time proven methods for basic WordPress housekeeping techniques. And this is how I start out any WordPress project, regardless of the theme that we're going to use. Now, I happen to be a big fan of the ultimatum theme because it's simply drop and drag, point and click, and you can literally build any type of custom theme for desktop, mobile apps, etc., etc. So to get started here, here's a fresh install of WordPress. So what I typically do first, of course, I'm going to go to my dashboard. And in my dashboard, I'm going to do a couple of housekeeping techniques that I like to do with all my WordPress installations. The first thing I'm going to do is go to Settings and go into Discussion. Now, depending on how you like to use your WordPress site, I use my WordPress site just like a regular website. I don't technically use it as a blog, which means I don't want a lot of spammers posting comments on my website. So to avoid that, I typically disallow any type of comments to my websites. So I'm going to basically go through and basically tie this up and not have people post things to my website as far as comments. That's the first thing I do. The second thing I do, of course, is save those changes. Okay, now I'm going to go into permalinks. Now permalinks is great technique for SEO, search engine optimization. So you don't want your WordPress site coming up with a page description of this. This means query page equals. That's not very search engine friendly. So what I suggest you do is either change it to day name, month or name. Now this is a this is depending on how often you're going to post things to your site. If you want to go very, very generic, you can just do the post name. That's certainly better than my default. I'm going to click post name and save those changes as well. Now the next thing I would suggest you do is go under post and go under categories because categories is SEO, which means that you want to come up with some kind of category. I definitely don't want to have something that says uncategorized. So one of the first things that I also do, I'm going to edit that. And since I do online training, I'm simply going to call that a category of online training. Now, the way that this works is this is what's going to happen when somebody sees it. What you put down here is going to come up in a search engine. Now, if you want to put something like online training, Adobe software, WordPress techniques, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you can do whatever you want. There's spelling sometimes helps. Now, you don't have to put hyphens in here because WordPress will put the hyphens in there for you and simply update that. So, that's my basic bread and butter setup of how I start out every single WordPress installation, regardless of the themes that I'm using. So in the next video, I will share with you the techniques of setting up and protecting your websites against hackers with a free plugin. So stay tuned. Now, I just want to share with you that WordPress is an absolute perfect system for creating SEO 
fast, quick e-commerce sites, any type of mobile site application. I'm not talking about native apps. I'm talking about responsive design applications. Now, unfortunately, WordPress sites are prone to hacking. Not the type of hacking that someone can in there and steal your information, but more nuisance hacking. Political hackers, you know, a lot of people from the West Bank, uh, a lot of people from different parts of the world will just want to post their agenda onto your site. So if you don't take these steps, WordPress can be very vulnerable to hackers. So step one, you definitely want to make sure you have the most current version of WordPress installed. Step two, you want to make sure you have the most current version of all your plugins and try to use plugins that are known. Don't buy a plugin from your neighbor's son, no offense to your neighbor's son, unless they're going to secure that plugin and update the plugin on a regular basis. So here's what I suggest you do. I want to go to Add New, and in my plugin, I'm going to type in WP Security. Now, when you type in WP Security, you're going to get a lot of options. My all-time favorite option for this, now don't be fooled here, there's something called Best but the actual better, best one is something called Better, and they just recently updated by iThemes. So this, now keep in mind, nothing's foolproof. Again, most of the WordPress hackers are just nuisance people, either trying to impress their friends, or trying to uh, state their political agenda, et cetera, et cetera, or racist agenda, I hate to say. So you can't protect against everything, but this puts a big obstacle in front of them so they can't get in and do a lot of nefarious things to your site. So we're going to install this, and I will take you through a step-by-step -step process of how to best protect your site. I'm going to activate this plugin, and then you're going to be presented down here under the WordPress, you have something called settings. Under So now, since this is a fresh install, I don't have to create a database backup. This plugin, incidentally, will back up your database for you and send you an email. It's really a one-stop shopping application. Now, this is a free plugin. If you want to donate to the people that developed this plugin, I highly suggest you do that. That makes your life a lot easier. So I'm going to say no thanks. I would have a backup. Okay. Now, if you click right here, this will tell you the different things. You can do one-click uh, installation. If I click here, I can just go through the different steps here. Now, I highly suggest you spend a little bit of time on this. There is a one-click solution if you click right here, and it will save from basic attacks. So you can just click these different options here, but I suggest you do exactly what I'm going to share with you. So the first thing I definitely want to do is change my user ID from number one because that's a great way for hackers to get into your system. Your first user admin ID is one, so we're going to change that ID. Okay. Now, what I, another thing I suggest you do is I'm going to enable this mode here and say, hey, I know that I don't adjust my WordPress site at 2 o'clock in the morning. So what you can suggest to do, what I suggest you do, is I'm going to say, well, I know that I'm not on my site from 12 a.m. midnight till... 8 o'clock in the morning. Now, you can change these settings to whatever you want. So by doing that, if you do get nefarious information, it's going to prevent anyone, including yourself, from logging onto your site during those times. Okay? So be careful and due diligence with setting that up. That just basically protects your information. Now, if you want to click here, what this is going to do for you, there's a list of, IP, of known IP addresses for hackers, and if you want to include those lists, you can click here. I'm not going to go through this right now, but you can just do a little bit more investigation in that. But I highly suggest to go through these step-by-step -step processes. Now, this is a very important step. I definitely want to change the directory to my WP content. And you can put in here whatever you want to put in there. So I'm going to put something like, uh, you know, uh, keep away. Now, for those of you that think that this is going to be my directory by the time you see this video, well, I'm going to change that. I'm just going to put WP content, keep away, and save those changes. Now, this is something I do highly suggest you do. Whether or not you want to go get backup buddy, totally up to you. But what you can do is create a database backup. Okay, so I create a database backup. It says, okay, 
How often do you want to back up your database? Well, that depends on the type of website you're running into. So if you're running a website like a membership website where people are logging on and paying money, etc., perhaps you want to back this up every day or every two days, etc., etc. So what this will do, this will keep a backup of your database on your server and send you an email notification that you can go and get those backups. So I'm just going to pick, I'm going to back up my, my website every once a week. Enable this and I hit save changes. Okay, now this is a very important step here, prefix. I want to change, and this is really important. This is a way that hackers get in all the time because WordPress also comes up with the same prefix for their tables. Their tables in the MySQL database that WordPress is run from. So if I click right here, that's going to change it to a random prefix right here. So I definitely suggest doing that you know, maybe once a month or something to change this up so hackers can't guess what your prefix is. Now, the hide option is really, really important. Okay? As you know, most people can log on to WordPress by going forward slash login, or they can register by going forward slash register, or go to the admin by going forward slash admin, or WP forward slash admin. So you can change that. So I'm going to call mine uh, login. Let's call this login go away. And in fact, I'm going to do that for everything. So we'll call this register go away. And we'll call this admin go away. Now, I highly suggest that you come up with a different word other than go away, because otherwise, all the thousands of people watching this video, including hackers, unfortunately, are going to say, oh, well, maybe their website admin is go away. Well, we're going to change it. We also want to gener generate a new secret key. Now, I highly suggest when you do that, to take that secret key and put that in a safe place. Okay. Now, here's the important part. If I now log out of my website, logging out of my website, and I go to log back in, and I try to log back in, or the hacker tries to log in somehow by going to WP admin or WP forward slash admin, et cetera, et cetera, it's going to say that the information can't be found because it doesn't exist anymore because we changed that. So you're going to have to remember that you call yours go away. So it's admin go away. So now I can go and I can log in. Now this next step is rather important because if somebody is trying to get into your site, you can actually give them so many times to log in what their threshold of logout is going to be, and you can blacklist repeat offenders. So if somebody is trying to continually try to access your site, you can say, hey, we're just going to block this IP altogether. They will never be able to even get to this site. Now, if you click this option, make sure that you have enough memory on your website in order to do that. So I'm just going to click this basic option here and click Save Options. Okay, so we're just going through a checklist one step at a time. Login. Okay, how many logins do you want to enable the person before you log them out, before you block them out? Now, if, a, if you have on your site forget password, well, then that's very simple for the person to request their password. But I think if a person hasn't figured out how to log in in five attempts, they need to request password. SSL, meaning if you're secure, uh, if you're um, website has an SSL certificate, you'd have to have it on your server. Now, if you sign up with my hosting plan, a little PSA here, all my hosting plans come with SSL certificates automatically installed. Now, this next step is rather important, but I'm not going to go through this step by step. Just read through this, and you can protect your different levels of files. Now, keep in mind that some of these settings may conflict with some plugins. But this is really an ironclad way of protecting your site and go through this. It's really self-explanatory. But I don't want to spend more time on this protecting your website, but definitely 100% take this. Take my word for this. I've had WordPress sites that were hacked because quite frankly, up until you know a year ago, I didn't take WordPress hacking too seriously myself because quite frankly, of the hundreds of WordPress sites I have up until about a year ago, none of them were hacked. So now I use this security system. 
So again, in our next video, I will share with you my all-time favorite free plugin for doing dummy content. So stay tuned. Now, if you know anything about the way that I work and what I do and what I share with my students since I've been doing this since 19, I've been doing software training since 1987, 27 years now. I'm all about production techniques and saving time, saving money, which is part of the reason why you want me to teach you, because I've been there. To quote, to quote Bill Clinton, I feel your pain. Okay, for those of you that are pulling your hair out at 2 o'clock in the morning, I want to cut through all that nonsense. I want to share with you the best way to go and do things. The advantage that you're going to have with my learning method is that it's proven I've been doing it for decades. A, the problem with other websites is they're not very thorough because they don't get get you. They don't teach you. They do a dog and pony show, but they they don't involve you in the thinking process to teach you how to use the software. More importantly, why should you be subjected? to signing up for a website and depending on the type of teacher you get maybe they're good maybe they're bad my training is all consistent because it's all me everything on my website is me training so we're now going to do something i'm going to share with you one of my all-time favorite plugins i'm just going to type in the word warm ibsen and see the easiest way to find this and you'll see that there's a lot of text generators the text generator we're going to use if you scroll down here at the bottom it's basically called, actually, I mean, you want the tape on this. If you just put in Ipsen, it comes up. If you put Orm Ipsen, apparently it doesn't come up there. So it used to, it doesn't anymore. All right, so this is called WP Example Content. And this is, this is going to save you so much time. Now, here's a good production technique. When developing pages for your client, be totally prepared for the fact that how do you tell your clients are lying to you? I hate to say this, but their lips are moving. Not they're intentionally lying to you. They all have good intentions. But don't always expect to start a website project and you're going to get all the content from the client. So rather than wait for their actual content, you can do simple mockups using this great plugin. So I'm going to go and install that. And I'm going to say activate the plugin. And when you do so, you get this real great sidebar here called WP Example Content. Now this is really, really cool. So as an example, if I go to my posts, the only thing I see right now are my sample hello world. And if I go to my pages, the only thing I've set here, up here is my sample page. Well, that's not going to help me to develop a website. And I don't want to sit there and type information either. So what this WP example does, which I really, really like, if I click right here, that's going to add all those pages to my post and all those pages to my pages. <laughs> ah, save that five times fast. So now if I go to posts, I get all those sample posts that I can now use. And if I go to pages, I have all those sample pages that I can use. So if I look at the front end of my website right now, at least I have something to work with. So I have my different menus here. And these are basically made from the pages that I just created. And it did the whole shebang for you. Incidentally, shebang is a tactical work. Now, when you're ready to now add your client's content, because now you showed them the mock-up and everything else, let me show you how simple that is to do. I'm going to go back to my dashboard. I'm going to go back to my WordPress example page and software is based on choices, based on these choices, I'm going to remove the sample post. Boom, done, finished, over, pay me. Now the only thing that's left is my default generic whole, hello world and the only page that's left is my generic sample page. Now in our next video, we're going to put this to practical use. So I'm going to go and add those sample posts back in. I'm all about production technique. Or just like that bare naked, bare naked lady song, I'm all about value. <laughs> Chickity China, the Chinese chicken. So in our next video, I will share with you how to install the ultimatum theme totally from scratch. So stay tuned. Okay, so now we're ready to install the ultimatum theme. Now what I highly suggest you do is make sure you have the most current version of the ultimatum theme. Uh, on your desktop or where on your computer that you can upload. 
So with that in mind, of course, we're going to go to appearance themes. And based on these choices, because software comes down to choices, we're going to add new. We're going to say upload, navigate our way to where it's kept. So we're just going to go to our downloads. And I have it set up right. I have it installed right here. I'm going to hit open and install. Once it's installed, of course, I'll activate that. Now, a couple things I want to talk about is how this is very different than your typical theme. This is a theme framework, which means you can do all kinds of clever things, including you making your own commercial theme that you can turn around and sell in the open market. Okay, your clients are really going to love the ability to work smart, work fast. So what we need to do next after the installation is complete, we need to click down here to Ultimatum Toolset. And you're going to be asked to basically log in. Now the login is the account to your Ultimatum theme, which if you bought from me, if you signed up for my course, you got the pro dev version from me. So the same username and password you use to log on to the Ultimatum theme site is the same username and password that you'd put in here. So once that's installed properly, you'll be presented with this screen. We're going to leave this exactly the way it is. Okay, now you'll notice here you have three kind of error warning messages to do things. Well, two of these three we need to take care of. The other one we're not going to worry about, and I'll explain that in just a second. Okay, so if I click here, it's going to want us to go. If you go down here, it's going to say you don't have, there's a couple things here that we don't have. Okay, so the first thing in order to get rid of two to three, we're going to go on the plugins. Now, these are the plugins that ship with the Ultimatum theme. These are not the plugins to be compared with your WordPress plugins. These are totally different. So we're going to select our core plugins. And I'm not going to install these two out here, but I am going to install my library and my mobility. So if I want to turn this into a mobile website as well, I need to have these two plugins. Now, of course, in my full course, I share with you how to use WooCommerce and share with you how to use BP Press. So I'm going to install this and say activate. Now after you activate it, you're going to hit the back button to go back here and install the mobility as well. This way you don't have to go through the whole process. So those two plugins are installed. So now I'm down to one caution. Now it's not really a caution. What it's basically telling you is that the server, this theme is recommending at least 40 megabytes of space. It's actually ideal to be 64. Now, if you sign up for my hosting plan, I want to be very clear about this. If you sign up for any of my hosting plans, I already have in my PHP INI file, already set up and defaulted to 128 megabytes. Now, that's going to not override, it's going to override this, but it's not going to override this warning. So if you want to get this warning to basically dissipate, to disappear, you need to follow these instructions. And these instructions are really simple. You need to go into your WP config and simply replace it, this, put this piece of text in there. We're not going to do that because I'm really not concerned about this because I have enough memory on my system. But in order to, if you don't want to see this come up every time, then you do have to follow these instructions here. Again, I'm not concerned about that because I know I have enough memory on my actual system through my PHP INI file. And I talk about that in my full courses on thinklearnearn.guru. So I've installed the software. In our next video, I will share with you how the Ultimatum theme thinks and what it needs from you. So stay tuned. Now, if you learn anything about how I teach software, again, I involve you in the thinking process. So what we're about to do, I'm going to share with you how to keep out of trouble with the ultimatum theme, meaning that you're not going to, hopefully you're not going to get in trouble with it, but meaning that it can be very frustrating, and any software can be frustrating when you're trying to learn something new. If you don't start thinking the way it thinks and what it needs from you, you will be frustrated. And that's across the board, whether it's Photoshop or Illustrator or Quark Express. Quark Express, who teaches that anymore? Well, that used to be the industry standard, but it no longer is. All right, so let me explain to you how this theme framework works. So we're going to go down here in templates. Now, here's a production technique. 
What I'm going to do is copy that, make a new tab window, Command T, Control T for Windows, Command T for Macintosh. So this is the front end of my website. Here's the back end. Now, very important step here, and this is the thing that's going to trip you up. You're going to say, well, wait a second. How come I can't see anything? Incidentally, this is the admin bar because I'm logged in as the admin. If you don't want to see that, a little production technique is you can go and open up a private window, which is basically a window of a non-logged in user. And this is basically what you would see, which is nothing. Okay. So part of the reason you're seeing this is because you're logged in as a admin or a person that could change the, the site. Okay. So here's the front end. Here's the back end. So you're going to say, well, wait a second. Why can't I see content? Because I know when I use any other theme, I could see my content right away. Well, ultimatum theme doesn't think like that. It doesn't work that way. So what we need to do is we need to have a template. Now you could say, wait a second. I have a template. It's a basic template. Well, that's true. So let me explain to you how the theme framework thinks. First of all, it's theme framework based on a theme. Theme basically goes to child theme. I'll talk about child themes in our next video. So the hierarchy to understand this is theme, child theme, child theme, template, which we have. Template, layout, layout, rows. So if I go and edit this layout, I can see that I have rows. Rows, widgets, widgets, content. So as an example, if I had a widget here, but I had no post or no pages, then I wouldn't see anything anyway. So you got to start to think how it thinks. So in this particular case, I do have content, post, pages. I do have a widget. I do have a row and I do have a layout. Well, why can't I see my information? Well, because I haven't set, if I go back to my template, is I haven't set this as my, drum roll please, default template. Now you may say, well, wait a second, should my only template be my default template? Well, you can argue with that all day long, but that's not how the software thinks. That's not how it's set up. You, intelligent being, need to talk to the silicon-based software. Carbon-based being needs to talk to the silicon-based being. So if I click set this as my default, and if I come back up here and refresh my page, then all is right with the universe. So now I can see all the content that I've set up with my new installation of the Ultimatum theme. So now it'll work like any other theme because I've set this up correctly. Now what you're not seeing up here is this is basically leaving space because this defaulted to the Twitter bootstrap menu. Well, part of the reason I have no menu is because I have no menu. So at our next video, I'm going to share with you how to install a custom menu because according to this, I have no menu. So in our next video, I will share with you how to create a custom menu. So stay tuned. So I hope you're enjoying this series. And again, the full series is available at thinklearnearn.guru. You know, if you really enjoy what I do, I, I just want to be really candid about something. You know, I work really hard for my students. And my whole goal and objective is to teach you the skills that will make you money, give you a career. And I'm talking about a very lucrative career, a career that as long as you have an internet connection, you can take to any part of the planet. Okay? I can't tell you how many websites I built sitting on a beach in Bali or sitting on a beach in the Caribbean, okay, or sitting on a beach anyplace, making money because I'm working smart. I've paid my dues with learning software. I'm sharing those valuable production techniques with you. Many of the production techniques you will not get anyplace else for any price. In fact, you can sign up for other sites and not get half the stuff you can learn here. So if you respect what I do, sign up for my courses. Okay, now. In our previous video, we talked about that the reason you're seeing this nonsense is because I have no menu. Here's my front end, here's my back end. So the back end, we're gonna go down here to appearances and go to menus. And we're gonna create a menu. And of course, we'll just call this our main menu and hit create. 
Now, this part here really has nothing to do with the ultimatum theme. This is basically WordPress protocol. And based on these choices, I'm going to select all my current pages and add them over here. Okay, pretty cool. Now, if I want to follow the same hierarchy, meaning that the child grandfather page, grandparent page rather, so what I will do here is underneath my image page, I will drag child below that, and I'll drag grandparent below that. Now, in addition to that, I have my sample page. I want to make that under, I'm going to put sample page here, there, anywhere, put the sample page drag it over, pay attention, come on, and put multiple page underneath that. Then I'm going to take my header page and put links and block quote underneath it. And then I will also put my unordered list underneath block quote, and I'm just doing this to share with you. In fact, let's do this. Let's do this under here, and let's do that under there. Just to share, with, just showing off a little bit, sharing with you how simple that is. Now, we can put these in different locations. We're going to make this part of my ultimatum default and ultimatum second menu choices. I'm going to save that. Now that I have a custom menu, if I now go back to my front page and refresh this front page, you will now see that I have a professionally designed drop-down menu system. And the really cool about thing, the really cool thing about this is by default, this is responsive design. This is based on the bootstrap model. So what happens is once you go down to a certain size, say 768, this automatically drops down to a responsive design website. In fact, I can take this all the way down to an iPhone application and everything will go right into place. How cool is that? Okay, so right off the bat, you've got a responsive design. Okay, now, What's really important to understand when working with the ultimatum theme, or any theme for that matter, is to set up and work with a child theme. Here's the advantage of working with a child theme. I'll talk about that more in the next video, but you definitely want to pay attention to working with child themes. Now, one thing I want to share with you is that since this is a frame theme framework, what I'm about to share with you as far as the child theme is actually built into the program, but it doesn't necessarily work the same way that other child theme plugins may work. I will share with you in my all access ultimate theme course how to actually work with a child theme plugin that will actually duplicate your original. But here's how it works in the ultimatum theme. I'm going to go to templates and based on these choices, I'm going to create a child theme. Now, if you do want to move the information from your basic template into your child theme, you can do that by clicking right here. We're going to choose not to do this. Now, here's what I suggest you do, whether anything, whether you're building a file, folder, JPEG file, QuickTime movie, name your thing something that makes sense to you next week, next month, next year. So we're going to call this our 960 RWD, responsive, responsive Web Design. And if I can learn how to type the letter, the number nine, that'd be a good step. Uh, child theme. Now, this is just out of habit to put in those hyphens there, but the hyphens are not necessary here, but it will put the hyphens here when I hit save. Now, upon creating a child theme in the ultimatum theme, theme framework, set up five times fast, you're going to say, okay, now let's go to the themes to activate that. So the second I go and activate that, notice right now I have my basic bread and butter ultimatum theme right here. However, if I activate my new child theme, watch what happens over here to the left. It's now going to change and switch that to the new child theme. It now says child theme. So now if I go to my templates, well, I don't have any templates for my child theme because I just literally created a child theme totally from scratch. But here's the advantage of working with a child theme. If there's a development update to your theme framework, your parent theme, if you want to look at it that way, and you need some behind the scenes things with PHP or custom plugins, et cetera, et cetera, those are going to be overwritten if you worked 
with your parent theme. However, working with the child theme will not be overwritten. So that's a true advantage of working with a child theme. Now, something I do want to point out to you from a production standpoint is this. If I go to my page right now and I refresh this, well, you're not going to see anything because according to this, I'm on the child theme and we don't have a template for the child theme. If you did want to see on the fly your ultimatum theme, which is my original theme, then that's set up for me right here. So that's how to use these two menus here. So on the fly, you're going to see, you can actually physically see those two themes. Okay, but what would the viewer see right now? Well, the viewer, if I go to new private window, they're going to see my new default theme, which is nothing. Which brings us to our next point of I would definitely set up if you're developing a site or you're changing an existing WordPress site, I would definitely install a maintenance plugin. And in my full access course, I talk about in detail one of my favorite maintenance plugins that's really a lot of fun with a countdown clock and a lot of other things involved. So in our next video, I will share with you how to set up this child theme the right way. Okay, so let me share with you a production technique and wording that working smart. So I'm going to go back to my appearance and I'm going to go back to themes and I'm going to initiate my original ultimatum theme. I'm going to activate that. Now the reason I'm doing this is now when I go into my I thought I activated that. There, now it's activated. So when I go into my templates, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Meaning that let's say that I do want to use this as my template for my child theme. Well, one of the cool things I can now do is export that template. We can call this template whatever we want. It's going to be the name right here. Now, when you export it, it's going to take the same name that you used here. But when we import it, we can give it a different name. And we're going to do that in just a second. So I'm going to say, OK. That's going to download that to my downloads folder wherever you have your downloads going on your computer. So now I'm going to go back to my appearance, go back to my themes, and reinitiate that as my active child theme. Okay, so now when I go to templates, I don't have a template. Since I don't want to reinvent the wheel here, I could simply say import template, navigate my way to where those templates are kept, which is inside my downloads folder, which you call basic template. And again, it takes its name from its original naming of the template. But when I import this, I can give it a name right here, which I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to call this 960 Responsive Web Design Basic Template. Now, if you don't want to be that descriptive, that's totally up to you. But I would highly suggest naming it something that makes sense to you next week, next month, next year. And apparently, I can't type in the number 9 today. And I do want to import the layout assignments, which is the information inside the layout itself. And I'm going to import that. So now it's been successfully, say that five times fast, it's been successfully imported. And if I now go back to my template, I can now set that as my default template. So here I'm in my child theme, and I'm going to set that as my default template. So now if I go up here and I refresh the page, I'm back to where I started. But the important part is I'm working with a child theme. So again, if there's major changes to the parent theme, it's not going to override and affect your child theme. So that's the importance of using the child theme. So in the next video, we will get started by building out a custom layout and using partial, partial uh, layouts for headers and footers. So stay tuned. So I want to talk to you about a, a production technique here, a template production technique. Now, unfortunately, I can, I should say fortunately, I can clone layouts, but I can't clone templates. So here's what I suggest you do. We're going to keep this as our basic template, but then I want to come up with different versions for maybe my client to look at. So I'm going to go back to Import Template. I'm going to browse that same template that we brought in. 
and I'm simply going to call this uh, 960. Let's call it the same thing we did before, but we'll just call this version 1 as opposed to version 2, version 3, version 4. Now again, part of the reason I'm doing this is now I have a base template to go back to in case I really, really screw things up. Okay, so this will be my base that I can always go back to in case I really muck this one up. But I want to work with this version 1 template, so I'm going to click and make that my default template. So right now, nothing's changed. Okay, so now I want to go into my layout and build a couple of custom layouts. Now, what I have here, and this is right out of the box from the ultimatum theme, is that I have my basic layout, which consists of one row with my WordPress default layout. That's part of the reason that you're seeing all this content here because all this content is being delivered up from your basic layout, which is your WordPress default loop. Okay, so I just want to be very clear about that. Now inside my header content, which by the way, let's go back to that for a second. So over here I have something called available parts. Now for those of you that didn't realize this, parts is short for the word partial, hence the word partial layout, full layout, which I'll explain in just a second. So the way that this got over here is it was this drag from point A to point B. Now you can actually drag this down here to footer if you want, wouldn't make any logical sense, but you could do that. So if I go back to my header and I hit the edit menu, you will see what's in here is the ultimatum theme menu, which was set up by default, inverse, default positioning, etc., etc., etc. Now I will share with you in my in my full course how to basically adjust these settings. All right. So here's what I want to be able to do. Let's go back to our layout, and I want to create a layout for my footer. So I'm going to go add new based on these choices. Add new. And we'll just call this, now part of the reason I like the, the word main in case I have secondary or tertiary headers or layouts or footers, so this will be a partial layout, P-A-R-T, and I'm going to save that. It's going to immediately put us inside of the layout of our main footer. Now if you misspell that, you can change it from here. Now for this, I'm just going to insert one row, and I'll just make this be uh, a third. So basically I could put columns in here if I wanted to. And I'm going to insert that. And this is going to contain, uh, in this particular case, I'm just going to make this really simple. I'm just going to put in some text. Just to share with you, I'm just going to put in a uh, column info one. And I'll just copy and paste that. And I'm just giving you an idea of how you can best utilize this. I'm going to drag another text and put it there. Put it right there. And I'll just call this column info two. And I'm sure you've seen these on real life websites. Now, here's what I want to share with you. Right now, I'm on a big 27 inch monitor and yet I can't see the information over here. So what you can do is command minus zoom back out or control minus zoom back out. Then I can take my text and drag it right there, and I'll just simply come. See, I got, a, I got a solution for everything. I'm going to save that. I'm going to save this. I'm going to save that and save my layout. Now, if we go back to our site right now, we put that dummy text or that placeholder text in there, column one sample, etc., etc. However, if I go back to my home page, you will see if I scroll down to the bottom, eh, no footer. Well, why no footer? Why is there no footer? Okay, because I didn't put the footer in my layout. I have a partial layout header, a partial layout footer, but I didn't assign it to anything here. So what I need to do is go to my layout, and based on these available parts, I'm gonna take this and drag it right down here. So if I save those changes, and I come back up here and refresh, will now see down at the bottom that I do have my one, two, three columns. Pretty cool. So that's how I can initiate and use my partial layouts. Now, we're going to skip ahead a second. And I'm going to share with you to kind of entice you to take my full courses.
Okay, so in our next video, I'm going to share with you how to use custom CSS in my great production. You're really going to be blown out of the water, and this is another reason why you want to use the Ultimatum theme. So stay tuned. Now, I realize we skipped ahead here, but I just wanted to share with you the power of this amazing theme framework. And again, I've used them all, but I, as of two years ago when this first came out, I was like, this, this person who created this, uh, Onar, by the way, is a developer for this. Uh, my hat's off to him because this is my all time. I, I, I strictly just use this theme because the other ones are just not as intuitive and not as flexible. This is the master of all theme frameworks, and it's only going to get better. Okay, so let's go back to our basic screen layout. And what we will do is I'm going to clone this layout. Now, when you clone the layout, it's just going to call the layout copy. So I'm going to edit that, and I'm just going to call this layout uh, custom CSS. And this will give you a good understanding of how cool this same framework is. Now, for those of you that are new to this, one of the true advantages here is not only do you have all these different choices, you're not locked into anything. The problem with a lot of the other theme frameworks is you're locked into their system and you're locked into their versions of plugins. This is totally open source. You can use any plugin you want with this theme framework. Now, if there's something in here that you don't see, then you can actually build your own uh, row layout inside the template model. Okay, I talk about that in my full course. So right now I just want to share with you something really valuable. I'm going to insert a row. I'm going to insert three rows. So I'm going to insert one. I'm going to insert two. And these are just 100% rows by default. And insert one more. Now, here's to share with you how incredibly flexible this theme framework is. Okay, let's save those changes. And so I put some content here. I'm going to go down to the Ultimatum Include page. And right here, I'm going to put my, let's put my multiple paragraph page there. Page title, and we'll leave it on. That's fine. Okay, on this section here, I want to put my sample page. And again, I'll leave the title fine. And here, I'm going to put my, in this section here, again, what I'm sharing with you is that the rows contain widgets, the widgets contain content. Actually, I didn't want to put the breadcrumbs there. I don't know how that happened. Probably Robert's not paying attention. Come on. Right there. Okay. And here I will put my block quote page and save that. So now, if I go up here and I refresh, you're not going to see much happening because I didn't set that as my new default layout. So let's go ahead and do that. I hit the back button. See, I want to share something with you really valuable related to this software or any software. What you think the software is going to do and what it does are two different things. You may think that you press the cherry cheesecake button, but maybe you accidentally selected the blueberry cheesecake button. So I just want to share with you, regardless of the software, Illustrator, Photoshop, Maya, 3 d Studio Max, which are all programs that I teach, by the way, okay, which will be part of my all-access plan on thinklearnearn.guru, because uh, I add more and more courses week after week after week after week. Anyway, so we need to set this up by default. So what I want to share with you is you have this set up. You're going to say, well, wait a second. It's not working. Do I need to reset my computer? Do I need to call technical support? Do I have a virus? No, because you didn't follow the rules. You're not thinking the way the theme works. So I want to set that as my default. Now, I have two choices here. Okay, so let's go back to this for a second and examine a couple of choices here. Okay, so for my, just mentally thinking about this, my multiple page layout, my sample page layout and my block quote have been set to this new layout. Now choice one is I could go ahead and set that as my default layout, but I don't want to do that. 
So what I can now do is go into my physical pages and I'm going to go into my block quote and based on these choices over here, I'm going to set my custom CSS so that page comes up. How cool is that? I'm now going to go to my pages. I'm going to select my sample page. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to set that to custom CSS layout. Now, unfortunately, Robert's going to be 55 in, uh, in May of this year. If you're watching this before May, well, I'm not 55 yet. If you're watching this after May, well, I'm 55. And for some reason, <laughs> my short-term memory <laughs> is not very good. <laughs> so I forgot the other page. Anyway, that's besides the point. So now, if I come up here and I select my sample page, first of all, I guess I didn't set my sample page to be a menu choice. So I can cheat a little bit here and just type in sample page. And my sample page will be set up for that new layout. Now keep in mind that that's not a multiple page. You're just seeing that simple sample page. So let's go with plan B. Plan B, and I could do that right from here, I can go back to my layout go back to my layout screen and I am going to physically set this new layout as my default. So again, the two choices you have, you can really have the best of both worlds. Now when you do that, by the way, notice that it jumped up here. So don't be confused to think it's still down here. It's not. Once you set your default layout, it jumps to the top. Okay. So now if I go back to the page, everything is now set to that new layout. So regardless of the page I go to, everything is now set to my new layout. Now, here's what I want to share with you since the topic of this video is doing custom CSS. So let's go back to our layout for a second. Now, you can create CSS for your individual div tags, and that's really what these are. Well, technically, there are article tags, HTML5 article tags, but they basically have IDs. So if you want to write IDs for this, it would be pound symbol column hyphen 81, pound symbol column 9 uh, hyphen 9 hyphen 1. Now, here's the problem with doing ID tags. If you export this as a template and bring this back into a new theme, those IDs are going to change or they could change because IDs are per layout. But if you do class tags, classes are the same. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to assign classes to these different sections, these different rows. Now, if you do it to the wrapper, it really doesn't matter which one we do here because the wrapper is going to actually do the outside and then there's the inside. So in this particular case, we're going to do it to the wrapper and based on these choices, we're going to add additional class. Now, when naming classes, if you know anything about CSS or ID tags, you can't start with a number. But you can basically spell the number out. So if it's going to be 50%, you can type the word 50. So let's do that. We're going to make this 50. And if I learn how to spell 50, that'd be a good thing. 50 with. And that's going to be the name of my class. Now I'm just going to cut that so I can put that same 50 width inside of the other rows. Save that. Now this I'm going to leave to be 100%. Actually, did I do it to this one? I didn't mean to do it to that one. I think I might not have been paying attention. Yes, I didn't mean to do it to that one. So I'm going to get rid of that. I meant to do it to the second and third one, so my mistake on that. So add classes, boom, and now that would appear depending on your browser settings. Oh, my mouse button's going low. We'll change that later. Okay, now here's the cool part. I've assigned classes to this, but I don't have any classes defined in my custom CSS. Now, for those of you that are not very good at writing CSS from scratch. I can appreciate that. I understand that. But it's really simpler than you think. 
You can actually use Dreamweaver as a tool, create your CSS visually inside of Dreamweaver, and copy and paste. Now, if you don't have Dreamweaver, you can just go to your www.w3s schools and just do a with property. So what I will do here is I'm going to go try it myself, and I'm going to create a class that's right there. Now, classes begin with a period. So it has to be called period 50 width. And the width of this is going to be 50%. So we're going to type in 50%. And the height will just leave at pixels. And just so you can just visually see this, we'll call this background uh, colon. And we'll just make this uh, red. So it's pound symbol F00. And of course, a semicolon. Now, if you want to try that, oh, my mistake on that. Uh, my humble mistake on that, I didn't put it in the hyphen color. So background hyphen color, that's your basic CSS property. Now, if you want to test that in here, you'd actually, whatever you name your class up here, you'd have to put the class down there. This is not a class on CSS. If you don't know how to build CSS, take my Dreamweaver class, or you can use this free little app here to do that. But here's the objective. I simply want to take my class tag and copy that, Command C, copy. So now when I go back into my layout, I can go to custom CSS. Now here's a couple of choices you have. You can make your CSS to the actual template itself, or you can make it for that specific layout. Totally your choice.